The earliest mention of cannabis goes back almost 12,000 years placed in the mountains of Central Asia. From there, seeds of the plant accompanied the migration of nomadic people and among trading routes through commercial exchange. There are records of medicinal uses in many cultures going back thousands of years, including before common era China, Egypt, Greece, and later in the Roman Empire. Fast forward to today, there are more than 100 cannabinoids that have been isolated from cannabis. You will recognize the names Delta-8 and Delta-9-THC and CBD. These are just examples of some of the cannabinoids found in the plant. Obviously, the better known cannabidiol or CBD was discovered in the 1940s, but was easily eclipsed and ignored because the focus was on identifying the psychoactive constituent Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol or Delta-9-THC. At that time, they actually also discovered a mechanism to partially synthesize Delta-8-THC and we will talk about what that means later, but it really wasn't until the 1960s that the major cannabinoids were structurally identified. Around that time period of the 60s and early 70s, research into the pharmacology of cannabinoids increased markedly, mainly in response to the widespread use of cannabis recreationally in the UK and other Western countries. Cannabis is a genus of a flowering plant. There are three main species, but the better known is the cannabis sativa. Within this species, there are two main types of plants, which are known commonly as marijuana and hemp. All cannabis sativa plants contain what we refer to as cannabinoids. There are over 100 identified in these plants, but the most well-known are CBD and Delta-9 THC. Both the marijuana and hemp plants naturally contain both CBD and Delta-9 THC. However, what makes them very different is the level of these two cannabinoids found in the plant. If you aren't sure of the difference, you're not alone. According to the National Institute of Health, one third of Americans do not know the difference. While they both come from the same plant, the cannabis sativa, they are not the same thing. Most important is the difference in their Delta 9 THC content. Hemp is defined by its low level Delta 9 THC of less than 0.3%. Hemp contains more CBD, and less THC. It is legal to grow and is specifically grown for industrial or medicinal uses, such as papers, fabrics, and medicines. In fact, when the Chinese invented paper, it was made from hemp. And before cotton was invented, hemp was a main source fabric for clothing. Marijuana, on the other hand, is defined by containing delta-9 THC at greater than 0.3%. This plant has much more THC in it than CBD and is grown for recreational drug use, and medicinal purposes. Marijuana is still Schedule One federally, so illegal at the federal level. However, we all know that individual states have varying degrees of how they regulate it or not. To better understand some of this discussion, we need to look at chemical structure. You see here that Delta-8 and Delta-9 are structurally similar, almost identical except for the position of one double carbon bond. Both delta-8 and delta-9 THC contain a double bond structure and a chain of carbon atoms. The position of this bond is why they are named slightly different. It is also what slightly differentiates their effect on the cannabinoid receptors on the brain. Delta-8 has a double bond on the 8 carbon, while delta-9 has a double bond on the 9 carbon. The most significant difference between these two are their levels of potency and, of course, their legality. Because of the bond's location, Delta-8 binds to the receptors differently. And many researchers believe this makes Delta-8 less potent and intoxicating than Delta-9. And we'll get into the legality here in a moment, but as it stands today, the most common cannabinoid tested in identifying marijuana use is the Delta-9 THC. And I wanted you to see the structure of CBD as well. It also looks very similar, except for this open ring down here. This open ring plays a significant role in how the body reacts to this compound and why it doesn't have a psychoactive effect on the human. Please do note their similarities. They all have the same molecular formula and the same molecular weight. And these factors are what makes differentiating them in drug testing challenging. Delta-9 is the most well-known type of THC and is known as the psychoactive cannabinoid found in high abundance within the marijuana plant. It's the part that causes the intended high and intoxicating effects. 
potential uses are cancer chemotherapy to alleviate some of those side effects such as nausea, vomiting, appetite loss, the wasting syndrome associated with cancer and HIV, neuropathic and chronic pain, and multiple sclerosis, spasticity. Some potential side effects, not all inclusive, but a good collection, red eyes, paranoia, anxiety, fatigue, sedation, dizziness, dry mouth, impaired decision-making capabilities, and other psychological effects. CBD is another of the over 100 cannabinoids naturally occurring in the cannabis plant. Studies show it does not cause that high effect associated with THC at appropriate doses, so many are turning to it to try to get that therapeutic value that cannabis may offer, but not the high. It is considered to be fairly well tolerated. However, there are really no standardized doses. CBD can be found in both hemp and marijuana, but higher levels of CBD are found in hemp. There are two general categories of CBD, products that are hemp derived and are required to contain less than 0.3% THC and products that are marijuana derived and may contain higher levels. CBD has been proposed to alleviate an assortment of ailments, and so many are turning to its use in order to self-medicate these ailments. However, the majority of these claims associated with CBD are false and illegally advertised. Studies do show there are some potential uses, anti-inflammation, anti-anxiety, anti-psychotic effects, and anti-epileptics. Delta-8 THC is indeed naturally occurring in the cannabis plant, but is in such low levels as to not cause the primary intoxicating effect. So in order to get that potency, it must be created altering either the hemp plant and thus the CBD within, or from altering the CBD within marijuana. As we discussed, CBD is in higher abundance in the hemp plant, so is most commonly isolated from hemp and extracted through a complex distillation process and then infused into other products. First, chemicals are added to the hemp to extract out the CBD, and then additional chemicals are added to the CBD to create delta-8. And this synthetic conversion allows it to be hyper-concentrated and added to products such as vapes, liquids, tinctures, oils, edibles, or sprayed onto hemp flowers and smoked. Fundamentally, utilizing some pretty basic chemistry, they are essentially closing up a ring to convert CBD to Delta-8 THC. And one thing I will point out, utilizing this simple chemistry still comes with risk. There are many byproducts that will be created in this process, essentially the leftover stuff after the chemical reactions that will remain in the products that can be very harmful if ingested or smoked, such as strong acids and bases and solvents and residual metals and a whole soup of potentially harmful unidentified compounds that we have no idea what their short or long-term effect will be when ingested. Delta-8 is largely unregulated and is often found in gas stations, head shops, and online. Usually these are sold outside of authorized marijuana dispensaries. It is often advertised as legal hemp products. Now, studies are claiming a much milder euphoria than Delta-9 THC, approximately you know, 50 to 75% less potent. So we often hear people call it diet weed or weed light, but it's not just cannabis's nicer, younger sibling. There are absolutely individual unique minor metabolites found when tested, just like minor cannabinoids such as CBN or CBD. Again, here consumer knowledge of effect and dosage is low with most knowledge gleaned from the internet through blogs and self-reported use. Now the target consumers are those looking to relieve stress and anxiety, those who don't want traditional cannabis products, and those who live in places where cannabis products are not legally available. Though it's been around a while, there really aren't as many studies as you would think on its effect on humans. Further studies really are necessary around Delta-8 THC to better understand any potential medicinal benefits or side effects. Studies that consider doses that are more reflective of these new synthesized products. As stated, it is only naturally occurring in low levels that is concentrated into these products on the market. So studies need to reflect accurate current dosing. Manufacturers make claims of lesser side effects such as red eyes and fatigue, dizziness, paranoia, nausea, with claim benefits of stimulation of appetite, relaxation, 
relieving soreness and body aches and elevated mood, to name a few. The perfect balance between CBD and, and Delta 9. Certainly of concern in any prepared or synthesized drug is the dose. Remember, these are deliberately concentrated formulations. The level of Delta 8 achieved in these products is not reflective of real life levels found naturally occurring in the plant. They will be much more concentrated. And remember, a mild effect doesn't mean it is a totally safe product. Just like any other drug, the effect of the drug is based on the dose of the drug ingested. Also of note is there is a complete lack of regulation of these products. There are no required warning labels or packaging protections. There's no mandated laboratory analysis to assure purity or accuracy of the ingredients. And they can contain small amounts of other cannabinoids such as Delta-9 and any number of byproducts from manufacturer. And as I mentioned, in most cases, nothing is known about health effects of these impurities. Children and pets are at particular risk for toxicity because they are naive populations. They can't read the containers and, and their body mass is significantly lower, increasing the risk of toxicity if consumed. What is particularly concerning is many of these products are labeled and packaged in a colorful way that would appeal to children. You know, some just look like candy in a jar, so children could easily be drawn to them. So how did we get here? Why now? The Farm Bill, or also called the Agricultural Improvement Act, made it legal to grow, sell, and consume hemp products. Contrary to popular belief, the Farm Bill wasn't just about hemp, but a whole Agricultural Improvement Act focused on many items such as forestry, energy, horticulture, nutrition programs, and rural development, to name a few. However, it is widely more popular for its guidance on the growth, sale, and use of hemp in the United States. Rise in the sale of Delta-8 is tied to this farm bill. Legalizing the sale of hemp opened up a huge oversupply of CBD and US grown hemp markets. So producers started looking for more creative ways to make CBD into something more profitable. So by using some pretty simple chemistry, they were able to convert this overstock into a new product on the market. And the Farm Bill is often misunderstood and often misinterpreted, however, did conclude that products derived from hemp were illegal as long as they do not contain levels of Delta-9 THC of 0.3% dry weight. And this 0.3% THC is the line in the sand determined to be too little to get a high and euphoria of marijuana. The bill did not include whether compounds derived from CBD are included. So this is absolutely a, a really legal gray area as it stands today. However, it seems like the DEA may disagree on that. The DEA released a final ruling on, in 2020 on the implementation of the Farm Bill. And in that it specifically states, all synthetically derived tetrahydrocannabinols remain schedule one controlled substances, which of course Delta-8 when created from this process of distillation is certainly derived from you know, a chemist's point of view since it's human control. This language regarding synthetics could be interpreted to mean that they regulate Delta-8 as a controlled substance. Like I said, legal gray area. So we'll need to see what happens next. All right, so what do we know? Well, agencies and law enforcement are increasingly aware of Delta-8 THC and are struggling you know, to plan on how to handle it. How do we handle its use? And once they do decide, be prepared that the federal and state agencies may not actually agree on Delta-8 legality between each other. Also, the DEA and FDA are both keenly aware of and are actively monitoring the Delta-8 movement in the market, as well as the products being sold and their marketing and advertising. So some, some food for thought here is, you know, this is certainly a murky gray zone between Congress and the DEA. So it will be interesting to see what happens next if the DEA chooses to enforce their position on the matter. So some testing considerations. We often get asked if CBD will cause a positive THC result. The answer is no. Standard THC screening tests and confirmation tests do not cross-react with or specifically identify CBD. 
This means CBD alone will not cause a positive THC result, but the THC in the product very well might. It is important to know that CBD products and their production are completely unregulated and can and do contain THC, which may produce a positive result in urine. No one is testing any of these products to see how much THC is actually in them. Also, almost no CBD product is totally pure. And finally, recent studies are showing some individuals will receive positive results from THC even at the legal levels of less than 0.3%. Our abstinence-based clients often instruct their participants not to use CBD products because you just, you don't know what's in them and even low level THC content products can still produce positive results. Another question, can Delta-8 THC and the use thereof cause a positive Delta-9 THC result? And that answer is complex and it might vary lab to lab. As we saw in previous slides, the Delta-8 and Delta-9 are very structurally similar with only that one placement of a single double carbon bond differentiating the two. So for the initial test, the standard screening by aminoassay looks for multiple cannabinoids. Again, as mentioned, there are many cannabinoids and several of them naturally occurring or otherwise could cause a cross reaction on the screening instrument, cause a positive result. This means yes, indeed, the presumptive screen for marijuana may result in a presumptive positive result from Delta-8 THC. For confirmations, while traditional drug testing confirmation techniques have been calibrated to only look for Delta-9 THC metabolite, Delta-8 THC metabolites can cause interferences, often preventing the reporting of the Delta-9 metabolite. Most laboratories recognize the problem and either have developed or are developing methods to distinguish Delta-8 from Delta-9 THC. Testing for specific cannabinoids can be complicated and there are limitations or benefits based on the drug testing sample type used. To learn more about Cordance testing capabilities, visit www.cordonsolutions.com or click the link in the description below.